Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you. This is Stockfish Dev against Leela ID 61211. So the opening given to both of them is actually to explore the Sicilian Sveshnikov and in particular the Caruana line which we saw in the recent World Chess Championship relative to this video. So that line is this A4 move. So it has ideas of Knight A3 to C4 later as well as restricting a6 b5 from black so it doesn't use that parking space the classic move has been c4 in the past so what do these high level ai entities think of this position bishop e7 we go a bit further actually in the exploration to actually here so this is being used by caruana this this point here a5 so now lila on its own plays a6 Knight a3, knight f6. So that pawn is hit now. There's an interference there, and the bishop gets out of the way, protecting d5, putting pressure on d6. So it seems quite logical. The knight might want to pivot, it seems, to put pressure on d6 and also b6. Bishop d7, and it does so. Knight c4. We have bishop b5 here. Knight b6, an exchange of light square bishops. Rook b8 f4 is played it's an interesting position uh, the third rank here is clear of pawns and you might think well what about rook a3 this is plausible actually it doesn't seem to do white any harm but on the other hand black seems solid enough in this position not to have any big issues for example like this it seems equal so f4 was played and in fact after e4 B3, white revokes that right to use the third rank in interests of other things, maybe C4 later. We have Queen E8. And this does actually set in motion, this Queen E8. It does betray the idea that perhaps black is interested in pinning G2. And if, if G2 is pinned, it means then the dreaded form pawn installation could be underway. Is chess really that simple? Is it all about form pawns? Queen d2, h5 is played. <laughs> the form pawn is is uh, being installed here. c4. h4, you might think. What about h4? Well, there's targets. Knight g4. And the problem with this, this pawn is a runaway past pawn, potentially. With e3 being played here, black could end up getting a significant advantage here with a lot of pressure. Okay, so... It seems as though white can't really react radically uh, here. So to h5. So c4 is uh, more natural looking to play for c5. h4, bishop c3. Uh, here, if h3, then knight h5 is dangerous for white. The dark squares have been compromised. And an en energetic move like this might actually become justifiable to get two connected past pawns here this is a very dangerous position for white uh, for example here black standing better so bishop c3 not weakening the, the dark squares with h3 queen g6 bishop d4 h3 now the form pawn has been installed <laughs> is this dangerous what does it actually do here for black uh, an interesting point of note is that this is the past pawn in the possession. White can uh, potentially create a past pawn with c5. This pawn could potentially be white's past pawn. Should past pawns be kept under lock and key? According to Nimzovich, past pawns are like criminals. They should be. And if there isn't a prison, there should be active surveillance. So Nimzovich went to town on past pawns. And I thought there's an interesting intersection uh, with modern computer science, the notion of the infinite loop. Because when you blockade a pass pawn, it's like that pawn under no circumstances, in no variations, infinitely, will not be able to move, basically, uh, once the blockade is set up and reinforced. Think about the blockade implications here. Rook b8, uh, b8, b4. So white's trying to create a pass pawn. And it looks quite a dangerous pawn mass on the queen side. Bishop d8. Black is potentially now threatening, it seems, e3 under certain circumstances. 
White, for the moment, pursues active surveillance. Rook a3. It seems, yeah, e3 is not possible. Knight g4. Now, surely e3 is possible. The knight is putting pressure on White's position, and e3 seems uh, something which White should be concerned about. Now, this is only a three minute with two second time, com uh, time control. And White actually calculates c5. And I find this, this absolutely a fascinating decision uh, from a blockade point of view and a computer science point of view, actually. Because it seems here, I thought, well, wouldn't bishop e3 actually be a logical move? This is the sort of move that uh, in the uh, Kasparov deeper blue match, that Kasparov was saying, oh, the computer you know, played a human move. It played a blockading uh, move in a Roy Lopez. I don't know if some of you are aware of that controversy. But blockade is a kind of human thing because we kind of can embrace the concept of permanence. Uh, and if the blockade is set up, the pawn cannot move in any variations until the blockade is released. This is much more effective than active surveillance. Uh, and I investigated this, bishop e3. So in the game, just to recap, c5 was played. But let's investigate bishop e3. What can black actually do here? If bishop takes b6, we can maintain the blockade with a takes. And it seems as though white should be okay in this position. For example, rook c8, rook c1, maintain the blockade on the e4 pawn. And it should be fine. What could go wrong here? The, the pass pawn is under lock and key. And it should be even. I'm not entirely sure black's plan it's dynamically equal. If uh, the blockade is released even for a moment, where bishop takes b3, uh, b6, then e3 could happen. And this actually gives black a very interesting position after rook e4. With the pass pawn's removal, we have, in fact, e-file pressure in this position, which combines well with form pawn pressure. And the two could actually create, potentially, a kind of zugzwang for white, so this is a really severe penalty, a paralysis penalty, for not keeping the passport under lock and key with a blockade. Uh, for example, bishop d4, queen f7. Black's position can evolve hugely here with that passport actually removed. OK, maybe uh, that wasn't entirely Nimzovich's concept of the criminal, you know, maybe to become you know, a queen later. This, But this swap for huge activity in this particular uh, example is also uh, very fascinating with the form pawn. For example, like this, white's under huge pressure here, uh, and black is the one that's that's better with the chances. So the pass pawn being removed by actually swapping for huge pressure. So anyway, this didn't happen. So c5, so d takes, b takes. And you could argue, well, now white's got this pass pawn. So Let's see what happens here. e3, though, is played now, activating this e-file. So bishop takes e3. Here, if it's ignored with queen e2, queen f7, this scenario, for example, bishop takes queen d5, looking at g2, really starts to tie white down. This scenario uh, is uh, quite pleasant. White's passport isn't going too far and is a liability there. Black's getting a big advantage in that variation. Uh, here, if rook takes e3 instead, knight takes, bishop takes, queen f7, uh, it seems as though black is in the driving seat here as well. Uh, we have a situation here in this variation where in fact the blockade is also pretty important for queen b7, otherwise white's uh, inflicting a lot of damage here. If, for example, this, then these pass pawns uh, are devastating. The two pass pawns are devastating. So these variations also show that, yeah, the pass pawns are pretty dangerous. White's getting a big advantage there. So they have to be kept under lock and key. Uh, so anyway, bishop takes e3 was played. We have rook e4. So it's been uh, swapped for huge piece activity on the e-file, potentially. Rook c1, and white has the pass pawn. Rook f e8, rook e1. You could also argue, though, that the form pawn itself is blockading this guy. And yeah, it's sort of imprisoning the king as well, putting the king under a kind of lock and key 
at the same time now. So there is a, a kind of prison over here. We have um, in this position, yeah, so this move rook e1. If bishop d4, then rook e2, and rook g2 check, and taking here, and this is devastating. Black would uh, be winning the queen there, massive advantage, crushing. So rook e1, and you can see that after king h7, white's position is a little bit paralyzed, as mentioned, uh, that this might happen. Uh, bishop h4 is also a very interesting technical move, which Stockfish comes up with. And in fact, for example, d6, knight takes h2, bishop takes, is a big advantage for black. That is an important technical move, it seems. If king h1, okay, that's probably best. And here, yeah, it's it's paralysis again. If white plays c6, bishop d4, and queen c6, this form pawn with the queen on this diagonal is pretty vicious. For example, like this, yeah, it's crushing. So anyway, yeah, so bishop h4 doesn't have to be reacted to, but even so, the paralysis shows. So king h7, they didn't bother with bishop h4, d6, queen e6, knight e5, and we have the queen coming to d7 where these pawns are now blockaded uh, at a blockade point which is a sort of intersection of the form pawn and blockading. So that dangerous diagonal with g2 is combining with things now after rook d3, queen c6, white is in a kind of zugzwang. The bishop is also serving a useful role hitting a5 all the time. So the queen is now potentially threatening queen takes c5, believe it or not, because a rook takes e1 crashing through. The knight is also guarding a key escape square f2. So this is a big threat now in the position. White starts to crumble here with queen c2. So I looked at various 30, this is on move 36. If we look at move 36, king h1, then knight takes e3 and rook takes e3 and takes here, taking here, and mating on g2 after the king g1 is not pleasant. 36 rook c3, bishop takes a5 is not very good. King f1, rook takes e3, and again, the problem here is g2 or queen h1. This just wins with the h pawn. 36 rook e2, rook e6, and paralysis is set in here, and in fact, Black has the luxury in this position of being able to play rook a4, hitting a5, and sometimes if the queen's not guarding a1, that's dangerous. But say taking a5, uh, this would mean actually now b6 is possible, undermining these pawns, and white's actually collapsing here uh, big time. This is just a piece down for nothing. Uh, 36, knight c3, then rook takes e3, rook takes e3, Knight takes e3, queen g2, mate. So 36 d7, just for the record, rook goes here. For example, queen takes c5 is a mighty move, crashing through that e file. So Nimzovich was kind of right that the pass pawn is a kind of criminal to be kept under lock and key, but sometimes it could just sacrifice itself, it seems, to induce paralysis in this example. So this is all a consequence of not blockading, it seems. So queen c2 uh, was tried, dropping a5. With the drop of a5, this means now this pawn is now liberated to undermine this structure. So white is actually collapsing now because of the latent b6 now. a5 is played first. So this uh, attacking the rook, okay. a4, putting the squeeze on with an outside pass pawn. Uh, and here a3 putting more squeeze on king h7 and now finally b6 in these circumstances pretty horrible stuff pretty painful queen d1 b, b takes c5 white's position is uh, coming apart at the seams rook d4 queen e2 and the game ended if bishop takes d4 queen takes d5 is crushing looking at g2 queen g2 mate and here, rook takes e2. This is just winning a load of material. So the game ended here after queen e2. Yeah, the, the, the piece is dropping. I know, it's spectacular. I was really impressed by this game and wasn't really sure. Was it a form pawn theme or was it a past pawn theme? I think we underestimate 
the power of the blockade. Nimzovich didn't just have my system. He also had the blockade, another book, where he was a fan of blockades. I think they are a very special case of, of kind of infinite loops applied in a sort of prophylaxis sense to, to one's position that to truly get positional security you really need to put things sometimes under lock and key and you could exa you could maybe see the form porn as putting white's king under a kind of lock and key the concept of lock and key is really really powerful i believe and it's shown here that white could have remained equal but when that pawn uh, was pushed the e-file with this form pawn configuration and then later the blockade of white's pawns just complete paralysis was induced on the white position so i thought it was a remarkable game uh, from a positional perspective uh, i hope you do too as well amazing i think amazing chess and this is only 61 2 on 1 since you know now at the time of this video there's already a network that's going above uh, apparently in self-learning so really great prospects for the Leela 60 network right now I'm really really excited to see the kind of chess it's gonna play uh, if you like the Sicilian Sveshnikov I hope you do after these uh, videos uh, there's a free short and sweet course at Kings Crusher TV slash Magnus I am chess explained goes over many ideas resources of uh, the Sicilian Sveshnikov and I, I have um, some contact with uh, Chris and he does use actually Leela in his analysis of variations uh, to find resources quite often as well so that has crept into uh, preparing uh, courses as well nowadays uh, so it's for certain types of positions the neural network approach uh, gets a great insight which you might not get from the traditional AB engines as well so check out that Kings Crusher TV slash Magnus course as well uh, short and sweet okay thanks very much